Hi everyone. Today in this video, we are going to discuss about cetagliptin. What is this drug cetagliptin? The suffix gliptin indicates this drug belongs to DPP4 inhibitors. We have few of the other drugs with similar suffix such as saxagliptin, lenagliptin, vildagliptin. All these are DPP4 inhibitors. So these drugs are going to inhibit one of the metabolic enzyme DPP4 which is nothing but dipeptidyl peptidase 4. This is one of the metabolic enzyme that is responsible for cleavage of incretins which are promoting the glucose dependent insulin release. So cetagliptin is a DPP4 inhibitor that's why this drug is useful in the treatment of type 2 diabetes mellitus. Along with the exercise and diet control this cetagliptin can be given in order to control the glucose levels. So it can be given as monotherapy. Otherwise it can be combined with other drugs as an add-on therapy in order to better control the glucose levels by promoting the insulin release. But at the same time the cetagliptin is not useful in the treatment of type 1 diabetes mellitus as well as in the patients who are having diabetic ketoacidosis. Again in such conditions cetagliptin is not useful. So today in this video we are going to discuss how this cetagliptin acts, what is the mechanism, precautions, side effects, contraindications and doses of this drug we will discuss in this video. Now let us see how this cetagliptin acts. After a meal, what of the food content present in the colon can stimulate the gastric motility and this colon stretching can release few of the hormones which are called as incretins. So from the K-cells, one of the incretin hormone is going to be released that is the GIP, glucose dependent insulinotropic peptide. Similarly from the L cells at the ileum, another hormone is going to be released that is the GLP-1, glucagon like peptide 1. These two are the incretin hormones which are going to promote glucose dependent insulin release. So one of their main target is the pancreas. So these incretin hormones can pass through the systemic circulation to the pancreas where they can stimulate the pancreas to release the insulin. Similarly, the release of glucagon can be inhibited by GLP-1. In this way, incretin hormones can increase the insulin release which reduce the glucose levels by increasing the glucose uptake as well as decreasing the gluconeogenesis. And they also inhibit the glucagon release thereby hepatic glucose production is going to be reduced. Similarly, incretin can also act on the gastric delaying time. The normal gastric emptying time is responsible for movement of the food content within the colon, but incretin myomatics produce a slow emptying. So gastric emptying is going to be delayed because of the incretin hormones, which reduce the appetite as well as controls the glucose levels due to less absorption. Now the incretin hormones like the GLP-1 as well as GIP, they can act through their corresponding receptors. So these GLP-1 receptors are widely distributed. They are mainly located at the pancreatic beta cells as well as they are also present on the alpha cells. And second location they are present on the heart and they are distributed within the kidney, lungs as well as GI colon. As all these locations GLP-1 receptors are present on which GLP-1 can act to produce its form class action. Similarly, GIP receptors are mainly abundant in pancreatic beta cells. So, incretin hormones are mainly located in the pancreatic beta cells where they are going to stimulate glucose dependent insulin release. Now, the incretin hormones like GLP-1 as well as GIP, they show the different actions to control the glucose levels. One of their main action is to stimulate the glucose dependent insulin release from the pancreatic beta cells. Similarly, they can also promote the beta cell proliferation which further increase the insulin release and de decrease the gastric emptying which reduce the appetite. And finally, incretin hormones can also reduce the glucagon release as well as they reduce the appetite. By inhibition of glucagon release, hepatic glucose production is also reduced. But the inhibitory action on glucagon release is mainly shown by GLP-1. In this way, incretin hormones can control the glucose levels by different mechanisms. Now, these are the beta cells. Here, GIP as well as GLP-1 are acting like incretin hormones. 
they can act on their corresponding receptors which are G protein coupled receptors coupled with alpha beta gamma subunits. Now GIP or GLP-1 can act through these receptors. By acting on these receptors they can stimulate the adenylyl cyclase pathway which can convert the ATP into cyclic AMP. Now cyclic AMP acts as an important secondary messenger within the beta cells. This cyclic AMP then promotes the protein kinase A. Protein kinase A are the phosphorylating enzymes which can promote inward growing calcium channels through which calcium can enter into the cells. And this calcium can promote the exocytosis so that insulin can be released out of the beta cells. In this way insulin is released by these incretin hormones according to the glucose levels. So glucose dependent insulin release is promoted by incretins. But the action of these incretins is controlled by DPP4 enzyme which is the cleavage enzyme for these incretins. Now DPP4 can act on these incretin hormones thereby can reduce their activity which results in the decreased insulin release by these incretin hormones. Now here cetagliptin can inhibit this metabolism. It can bind to this DPP4 enzyme very selectively thereby inhibit the enzymatic activity which promotes the action of incretin hormones thereby more glycemic control can be observed in the patients. That's why even DPP4 inhibitors are given by monotherapy but better they can be combined with other drugs which produce more glycemic control in the patients. What are the precautions? One of the important precautions of cetagliptin is that this drug can affect the pancreas because side of action of incretin hormones is pancreas. This drug can also produce some effect on the pancreas and it can produce some acute pancreatitis. With the use of cetagliptin, we can observe few of the symptoms in the patients such as abdominal pain, a sudden unwanted weight loss, nausea and vomiting, fever, rapid heartbeat, some dehydration, diarrhea as well as bleeding problems. If any of these symptoms are observed in the cetagliptin, it may indicate acute pancreatitis developed in the patients. So in such conditions care should be taken in order to avoid further development of pancreatitis in the patients. Similarly another important precaution of cetagliptin is due to its combination therapy. This drug can be used as add-on therapy. So it can be combined with sulfonylureas such as glipizide, glibenclamide. Otherwise it can be combined with insulin preparations. But here cetagliptin can produce hypoglycemia as one of the important side effect as well as sulfonylureas can also increase the hypoglycemia. So this combination produces severe hypoglycemia in the patients. So when this drug is given in a combination therapy, any symptoms of hypoglycemia should be thoroughly checked. Third important precaution is the hypersensitivity produced by cetagliptin. This drug can produce angioedema which produces some swelling of lips, face as well as tongue, anaphylaxis which can bring some difficulty in breathing and some skin rashes and even this drug can produce a fatal hypersensitive reaction such as Steven Johnson syndrome. So care should be taken to check any hypersensitive reactions in the patients and if any hypersensitivity is observed then immediately this drug should be stopped and replace with any alternative drug. And particularly these hypersensitive reactions can be observed within 3 months of the treatment of this drug. So within 3 months care should be taken to check any hypersensitive reactions within the patients. What are the side effects? The important side effect is the hypoglycemia. Similarly this drug can produce some nasopharyngitis, upper respiratory tract infections. Other side effects mainly include headache, peripheral edema, abdominal pain, nausea, diarrhea and upper respiratory tract infections which may produce some sore throat, stuffy nose and acute pancreatitis may be developed due to this cetagliptin, angioedema, urticaria as well as skin rashes can also be observed with this cetagliptin. What are the contraindications? One of the important contraindications of this drug is the hypersensitivity. As we have discussed earlier, this drug can produce some anaphylaxis as well as angioedema. In such situations, this drug is contraindicated. Now let us see the chemical nature of cetagliptin. So this is the structure of cetagliptin and here we can observe one of the heterocyclic ring system. The pyrazine ring is fused with trizolo ring. So this is nothing but trizolo pyrazine ring system that is present in the cetagliptin. Similarly here and the ring system is the phenyl ring with three fluorine groups. So this is nothing but 245 trifluorophenyl ring system. And these two rings are attached by a alkyl bridge. So let us give the numbering here. This is 1, 2, 3, 
4. So this is a butyl chain at first position oxo and third position amino. So this is nothing but 1 oxo, 3 amino butyl chain is present between these two ring systems. How it is given? This drug is given as a tablet form and the dose of this drug is initially given as 100 mg once daily. But in the patients with some renal impairment, the dose may be adjusted. When the creatinine clearance is in between 30 to 50 ml per minute, then the dose is reduced to half. So the dose given is 50 mg once daily. But when this creatinine clearance is less than 30 ml per minute, then the dose is going to be reduced to one fourth. In such patients, the dose is 25 mg once daily. So that's about this drug. Cetagliptin, which is a DPP-4 inhibitor, which can be used as a monotherapy or it can be combined with other drugs as a combination therapy. This drug mainly inhibits the metabolism of incretin hormones like the GIP as well as GLP-1, which increase the insulin secretion and reduce the glucagon release, thereby it can produce better glycemic control in the patients. Acute pancreatitis is one of the important precautions of this drug and this drug can also produce some nasopharyngitis upper respiratory tract infections and hypoglycemia is another important side effect produced by this drug. And this drug is given at a dose of 100 mg once daily. But in the renally impaired patients, the dose may be reduced to half or one fourth based on the renal impairment in the patients. So that's about this cetagliptin. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.